with clarity. Your people are built up, equipped, edified. Jesus is glorified. By the end of this service tonight, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. There's some noise on my monitors. Very irritated noise. Lift your right hands up. Let's release our faith together. So say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service around the world by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We want to welcome you to this great word feast, even as we begin, you know, this conference of New Creation Camp Meeting. We're so excited to have every one of you connected to the service. All of the Kwaibom State community, we want to welcome every one of you to the service tonight. Help me call a friend, a family member, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, both by XLFM, Comfort FM, Radio Aquaibom, Inspiration FM, Passion FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to this service tonight. I also want to ask our social media, like you've always done, help us to get the word around the world. Put the messages on, you know, all the various platforms that you're connected to. Share the message. Let's get the truth of Christ around the world. All our campuses around the world, we're glad to welcome all of you to this great world feast. And we're so glad to have everyone as we spend this time together in the study of the word of God. Are we excited to be in church tonight? Can we give Jesus a celebration and a rejoicing for the word we're about to receive tonight? Glory! Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Grab your phones also and help me get the word around the world as we begin to feast in the truth of God's word. We began the new creation camp meeting yesterday morning and we began to lay foundations and I'm going to lay some more foundations today, probably tomorrow and the day after because, you know, as we began to see yesterday, when you study the uniqueness of the Pauline revelation of identification, there is carefulness required in understanding concepts that were communicated by the spirit of truth. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 15. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 15. Now we're going to read 15 and 16. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we began to establish that brother Peter gave credence to the insight, the insight that brother Paul operated with. He says, he says brother Paul had some insight. There's a wisdom given to him. There's a wisdom given to him. And yesterday we took time to look at that. Now, we think that Peter was just making a light statement. No, Peter wasn't joking. Peter wasn't making a light statement. We have seen that those who be handled Paul's explanation of First Thessalonians chapter 4, yesterday when we were examining the concept of the rapture or what we call the resurrection from the dead. Those who made light of that, of that concept ended up communicating to the church world the world over a disappearance mentality which is not what brother Paul was communicating in the epistles. Obviously, they wrestled the scriptures to their own destruction. So you must understand Brother Paul's language. I believe that Paul as a person should be studied as a cause. And I'm very serious about it. Brother Paul, 
I do not know if the people of his day were that intelligent. He was able to present Christianity to us in a way that is clear to us in the things he communicated. He is telling you in other words that Jesus Christ is truly Lord. He's teaching this when there is Rome and yet he talks about the kingdom of Christ. He talked about the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof under a Lord by the name of Caesar. That will make Agrippa submit. And Agrippa will look at Paul and say, you are beside yourself. Much learning makes thou mad. And that was because of Brother Paul's soonnesses, which was out of this world. So you must understand Paul and how he writes. It's very important. In Second Peter, where we just read, he said, wisdom was given to Brother Paul. That word wisdom is the Greek word Sophia. Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, where you have the word Sophizo, S-O-P-H-I-Z-O, about salvation. The word Soteria. Then in verse 16 of that second Peter chapter 3, he says, as also in all his epistles. So he called the writings of brother Paul epistles. This is Peter speaking now, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Peter uses the word hard, not impossible. Hard to be understood. The Greek word dos nestos. Dos, nas, dos nestos. It simply means hard, difficult. You must take some time in dealing with the Pauline revelation. You must reason through. When Paul says meditate upon these things, you must take him seriously. Meditate upon these things. Is because he knows what he wrote. That's why, like I said yesterday, no other apostle prayed for his readers to have the spirit of revelation that their eyes be opened only brother Paul because he knew what he was writing. No other person prayed that you may know only brother Paul. Brother Paul prayed that you grow in grace and in knowledge. Only brother Paul will pray that God will grant you to know by the spirit. So he comes in with the key fact in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15 when addressing one of his allies by the name Timothy. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. That word is the word pistis, faith, pistis, Paul's faith. Faith in the Messiah. So the question is, did brother Paul ever contradict Jesus? Well, Paul never did. You really must know Paul. You must understand what Paul is saying. Let's go back to what Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse number 12. John chapter 16 verse number 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. Jesus already gave room for what we have today as the Pauline letters. You cannot bear them now. It is a Greek called etipolos. That is, I have much to say. It thus means that there will be an advancement of Jesus' sayings. An advancement of Jesus' sayings. If you don't understand the use of language, you may think it's a contradiction. No, it's an advancement. Polos means great. I have yet a tie. Remaining so much to say, a tie polos. So therefore, you will find much more vocabulary, much more verbiage, much more explanation of the teachings of Jesus upon his resurrection much more upon his resurrection. It will appear a contradiction if you don't pay attention to details. Much more to say, but you cannot bear them now. Look at that John chapter 16, verse number 13. The next verse. 
How be it when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Jesus uses the word hodegeo, hodegeo, H-O-D-E-G-E-O, hodegeo, a word used for the blind. He will guide you. When he is come, he will guide. Hodegio. In, in Matthew chapter 15 verse 14, you will find that word used. Matthew 15, 14. And in Luke 16, 39, for further reading, Luke 16, 39. But precisely, it was used for Philip and the eunuch in their conversation. In Acts chapter 8, verse number 31, Acts chapter 8, 31. And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he will come up and sit with him. Some man should guide me. So the guide will be through the scriptures. The guide will be through the scriptures. So put this in your mind. I have yet many things to say unto you from the Old Testament, but you cannot bear them now. Hodegio. The spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth. The Old Testament. So we will say the spirit of truth will be the revelator or the revealer of the Old Testament scriptures. The spirit of truth will be the revealer of the Old Testament scriptures as a continuation from or a continuation of things that Jesus taught and said. A continuation of things that Jesus taught and said. That means therefore he will guide through the Old Testament. You know, whatever Jesus said was from the Old Testament. Whatever Brother Paul will teach will be from the Old Testament. But it must be seen as an advancement, not a contradiction of the things that Jesus taught. Please, it's important to get this foundation. It will come in very handy in the next few days. And it's key to understand this. All right? Remember, we're dealing with... Um, the insight of brother Paul and it's important to get the background. Now, look at Jesus' words. Jesus throws those words at us. In our reasoning, he suggests the spirit of truth or pneuma aletia. Pneuma aletia in the Greek. Pneuma is as in pneuma or pneumatology. P-N-U-E-M-A aletia. A-L-E-T-I-A. In John chapter 14, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse number 16. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. If your Bible was mine, I will underline another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. This is Jesus' words. That he may abide with you forever. Another comforter. But before he says that, he now says, I will pray the Father... The word another comforter is the Greek word alos parakletos. Alos, A-L-L-O-S, parakletos, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S, a paraclete. Uh, he will give you another paraclete. Don't mind the amplified because the amplified has too many wordings for that verse. All right? It's just, you know, over talk. Then he says, he will abide with you forever. John 14, 17. John chapter 14, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in. Shall be in you. From verse 14 to 17 of that John chapter 14, Jesus is talking about knowing the Father. Knowing the Father. He calls knowing the Father as the work or the office of the Alos Paracletos. 
the work or the office of the allos paracletos. Another, allos means another of the same. Another of the same. Allos paracletos. Another of the same. Okay? Another comforter or another paracletos. Another of the same. Allos. Another of the same. Look at John 14, 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, whom the Father will send in my name, another comforter, whom the Father will send in my name, the name, the name, not the label, the office, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, John 15, 26. John chapter 15, verse number 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send, whom I my father will send you another comforter. Now, whom I will send unto you from the father. Jesus is teaching. Now look at his play of words. Lazarus is sleeping. Let's go and wake him up. Okay. Now, whom the father, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. Now he mentions comforter so often, you wonder what he's talking about. A comforter or a paraclete. It simply means a helper or a guide or a standby. Look at John 16 verse number 7. John chapter 16 verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He repeats it again. Then he repeats it again in verse 13. Verse 13 of John 16. John 16, 13. Have it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. All right, now. He talks about remembrance. He will bring things to your remembrance. Now listen. In other words, Jesus places a whole premium in his resurrection. When he is come. When he is come. What will happen when he is raised from the dead? So go back again to John 14, 26. John chapter 14, verse number 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. That therefore means that there will be a recall of all he has taught in the four gospels. There will be a recall of all he has taught in the four gospels. The remembrance will not be a memory short. Like oh he said so. Oh this is what he was saying. That remembrance will be an explanation. An explanation. That is, all you will have in the resurrection is an advanced explanation of the things Jesus has spoken. An advanced explanation of the things Jesus has spoken. So in as much as the audience of Jesus were the Jews, no doubt, Bible interpretation always makes you respect the audience factor in interpreting facts and statements made. But irrespective of the audience is a fact that the words of Jesus are the words of the Father. The words of Jesus are the words of the Father. And the words of Jesus are revealing of the Father. The words of Jesus are revealing of the Father. 
And what happened to us in the resurrection of Jesus is that we now have an advanced explanation of the things he said. We have an advanced explanation of the things he said. Now the person advancing the explanation is Christ himself. Except you don't understand who is in the church. Is Christ himself. Except you don't understand who is in the church. So therefore when he rose from the dead, that ministry began. Because when he rose from the dead, the first thing he does is that he meets two of his disciples on the way to Emmaus. As he rose from the dead who we are conversing over the death of Jesus and over the witness of the women. Luke 24, 25, O fool, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Slow of heart to believe. So that means the challenge in John 16, 12. The challenge in John 16, 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. The challenge there is that they had a faith problem. They had a faith problem. Slow of heart to believe. Slow of heart to believe. The word there is foolish. Fools. Foolish. Actually, to be without reasoning properly. When we say you are a fool, it means you are not reasoning properly. Then it says slow of heart, the Greek word brados, B-R-A-D-U-S. It means you are sluggish. You are laid back. Slow of heart, brado, sluggish. So there are three words to take note of. Number one, fools. Number two, slow of heart. Number three, to believe. The word believe is the word pistis in the Greek. P-I-S-T-I-S. Pistis. Brados pistis. O fools, brados pistis. Slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets... He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The word daimenua in the Greek, to interpret, expounded, daimenua, to interpret or to give the meaning of what was said or to show the meaning of what was said. Luke that 24, 27 says, full, it says, beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He interpreted, he interpreted, expounded. So what he was saying when he said he will guide you into all the truth in John 16, 13 had just begun on the way to Emmaus. It has just begun post-resurrection. So now, the guidance into all the truth has started. The spirit of truth will do the guiding. But the spirit of truth is Jesus himself. Because he has just started guiding them into all the truth. I'm teaching good. Now, and those guys started claiming in Luke 24, 32. Luke 24, verse number 32 he says, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Well, I disagree with them. He didn't open to them the scriptures. Rather, their minds were open to the scriptures. Their minds were open to the scripture. And brother Luke later recognized it in Luke 24, 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then opened he their own understanding that they might understand the scriptures. 
He opened their understanding. So it was not the scriptures that were opened. It was their understanding that was opened. Because the scriptures have always been opened. They have never been closed. Okay. Now. So therefore. We have what we call the advanced teachings of Jesus. Which he commends right there in Luke 24. Through 40 days. So he goes through it to explain some things he was saying. Jesus wasn't saying anything different. He is not saying anything different. He is just explaining it in an advanced version. Advanced version. Notice again Luke 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. It is the same thing I told you before that I am telling you now that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophet and in the Psalms concerning me. So the things I said while I was yet with you, that comes at us again. The things I said when I was yet with you, full slow of heart to believe while I was yet with you. He will bring to your remembrance the things I have said to you. These are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you. Are you watching? Okay. While I was yet with you. He therefore makes it imperative that anybody who will teach Christ must never depart from the things that were said in the four gospels. Anybody who is going to teach Christ must never depart from the things that were said in the four gospels because they are a remembrance. In other words, they are a further explanation. They are not a departure. They are a further explanation. They are not a departure. Sometimes we get lazy and we say, well, that was the four Gospels. Jesus was under the law. They were not born again at that time. So that, that, that gives Jesus a tag as someone who didn't know the truth or who didn't teach it. But it's not true. You are the one struggling with the capacity to understand the advanced teachings of Jesus in the epistles. What I'm saying is, the epistles are the advanced explanations of what Jesus said in the four gospels. That's what we're saying. Because there's a consistency to biblical doctrine. And so it's not proper to just say it's the four gospels. No, it's the four gospels. Now we are under grace. Yet the eyewitnesses say everything Jesus did was grace. When John said we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth and of his fullness have all we received grace and for grace. You cannot remove that from what he taught. What he did and what he said. You can't remove it. So don't forget again, Jesus never used the word grace. He never used it. Also observe, if you followed me yesterday very keenly, I also said yesterday, Jesus hardly used the word salvation. And Jesus hardly used the word savior. Just like he never used the word grace. Yet, grace, salvation, soteria, sota, will now be the explanation of the spirit of truth. There will be the explanation of the spirit of truth. Of the things that Jesus said in the four gospels. 
they will be advanced explanation. That's what they are. They are not contradictory. They are explanatory. Don't forget again, when he said, while I was yet with you. So what led to the conversation of another comforter? John 14 verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Next verse. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Next verse. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Next verse. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father. Mm, I love Jesus, man. <clears throat> Are you still here? In other words, the teaching of the church has already been demonstrated in the earthly life of Jesus. The teaching of the church has already been demonstrated in the earthly life of Jesus. So what we have in the four Gospels is the action of our doctrine. What we have in the four Gospels is the action of our doctrine. So he that has seen me, he said, has seen the Father. He that has seen Jesus has seen the Father. Then he said, in that day, because of your unbelief and because of the way you sound now, in that day you will know. What will you know in that day? John 14, 20. John chapter 14, verse 20. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father and you in me, and I in you. You shall know this in that day, because now, if I say it, you are in unbelief. You can't be it. But in that day, you will understand my communication in a more advanced and clear way. Are you still here? Don't forget, that the teachings of Jesus are not contradictory or the epistles are explanatory. So therefore it means that the eyewitness account of Jesus is critical because the eyewitness account is important to us. You remember when we are talking about why do you believe the Bible? Why do you believe the God? It is a collection of historical Reliable material by eyewitnesses in the presence of other eyewitnesses. Critical, very critical to our faith as believers. Now, so it means therefore that the eyewitness account is critical because the eyewitness account is important to us. It is not the absolute insight. The eyewitness account is not the absolute insight it is not the end of revelation, but it is the foundation of revelation. The eyewitness account is the foundation of revelation. Hence, the importance of what the apostles said and what they always did. Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 16. Brother Peter speaking concerning what we are just saying. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Eyewitnesses of his majesty. Next verse. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We didn't create, we did not fabricate a story with cunningly devised muthos, myths. When we made known unto you the parousia, the power and the parousia of the Lord Jesus, the coming of the Lord Jesus. But they were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They saw and touched him. First John 1 John 1. 1 John chapter 1 verse number 1. 1 John that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands, this witness he said, our hands have handled of the word of life. We have handled him. We know what we're talking about. That, that is what they were all doing by saying those things. They were authenticating the Pauline revelation. Because without that, what will Paul say he is teaching? The writer of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, look at the way he puts it. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more energy to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. This is written to the Jewish audience. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, eyewitnesses. Next verse. God also bearing them witness but with signs, wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Confirmed by the Lord. So the words of the epistles will be found in the teachings of Jesus. Please, that's very important. The words of the epistles will be found in the teachings of Jesus by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard it. So the words of grace, the words of hope, the words of righteousness through faith we are said first by the Lord. They were said first by the Lord and confirmed unto us by them that heard it. God also bearing them witness with signs, wonders, diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. Look at Luke chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. Luke chapter 1 from verse 1. <clears throat> look, look at Luke. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Next verse. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. They handed it to us, those that were eyewitnesses and apostles of the world. That is, they gave us these words. In other words, what I am bringing to you was confirmed by those who were ministers of the world, the eyewitnesses or the apostles. That's very important. Jesus therefore committed his teachings orally to these guys. He committed his teachings orally to these guys. And I can tell you the ability to put it down today or to communicate it to others like we have in excellent fashion by Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is supernatural. That itself is supernatural. Yes, it is eyewitness 
and it deals with the ability to have seen things and have the perception of them, I agree. But it is supernatural. That's why the qualification to be one of them, when they were trying to replace Judas in Acts chapter 1 verse 19, put it up for me, Acts chapter 1 verse 19, they said, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much, that field is called in their proper tongue, Akel Dama, that is to say the field of blood. Next verse. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Next verse. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Next verse. Beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken off from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So he must have he must have written down or he must have written down that qualification because he knew from what Jesus gave them as responsibility. What did Jesus tell him in Acts 1 8? Go and be witnesses. Luke 24 41 witnesses go and be witnesses so a witness is the guy who carries what you believe who you are what you say verbally and vocally and in his lifestyle pass it across to the world that's a witness the guy who carries what you believe who you are what you say verbally and vocally and in his own lifestyle passes it across to the world. And therefore, he must qualify by knowing what you say and what you teach. He must qualify by knowing what he says, what you say, and what you teach. And Paul couldn't be called that kind of witness. Brother Paul couldn't be called that kind of witness because he wasn't there. He wasn't physically present. And so he rolls out the qualification of replacing Judas. That means he also must hear the explanation directly from Jesus' mouth. He must hear the explanation, which Jesus did for 40 days. He must have been in that audience. Whoever will replace Judas must have this capacity. So Jesus therefore commits his preaching. That is what it is said that the first mode of communication for many early years of the church was called the Karigima. The Karigima or the Keruso. That is words. Karigima or Keruso. That is words. They didn't have the benefit of websites or written form. It was words. So there had to be the witness of his resurrection. And church, I need you to understand this. That they witnessing the resurrection is not that they saw him rise from the dead. They saw him rise from the dead and they sat down for 40 days and had him explain every concept in details by himself. That means by himself he guided them into all the truth. By himself. The spirit of truth. So which means the epistles which are the advanced teachings of Jesus is what we call the spirit of truth. So that means the way the epistles will say it is the truth. So if the epistles does not comment on anything from Moses down to the four gospels, we also don't comment. Because the spirit of truth did not recognize that enough to comment. I'm teaching good. Because the resurrection comes with the explanation of Christ. It's in the resurrection that we have the spirit of truth. And Paul will put it like this in Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Are you still here? Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. Next verse. Which he had promised afore by his prophets 
in the Holy Scriptures. Next verse. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Next verse. And declared to be the son of God. How? With power. How? According to the spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection from the dead. He calls it the gospel of God. Which he promised afore by the mouth of his holy prophets in the holy scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ. He is marked out the son of God by the spirit of holiness. By the resurrection from the dead. So, the resurrection therefore of Jesus is revelation in itself. The resurrection of Jesus is revelation in itself. That's why Paul will say, how will you say that Jesus was not raised from the dead? The moment you say that, our faith is vain. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. First Corinthians 15 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Verse 17. And verse 17, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. It is the resurrection that explains Christianity. It is the resurrection of Jesus that explains Christianity. Now listen carefully as I begin to wrap up. Are you blessed? We can therefore call the resurrection of Jesus the Allos Paracletos. The resurrection of Jesus is the Allos Paracletos or the Numa Aletia. Because what is called Allos Paracletos, the same help, the same strength, the same power, the same insight, the same grace, however, now is living in you. Is living in you. The same help, the same strength, the same power, the same insight, the same grace is now living in you. And the spirit of truth, Allos Paracletos, Christ raised from the dead. He didn't rise from the dead to go to Galilee. His resurrection is ascension. Yadosh. He didn't rise from the dead to go to Galilee. His resurrection is an ascension because he now lives in the man that he saves. He now lives in the man that he saves. Don't forget he is a sota. Eh? He must have claimed something. He must own man. He must own man's heart. And in that same act of owning you, you have the allos paracletos. And Paul doesn't use all that. Allos paracletos, numa, aletia. Those were all Jesus' verbiage. All of those were Jesus' speakings to people that couldn't bear it. Now Paul comes in the spirit of truth post-resurrection. He does not use all that grammar. He simply says, in Christ. In Christ is Paul's signature of saying, Allos, Paracletos, Numa, Aletia. He will live in you. All of that is in Christ or Christ in you. Those are terms for the resurrection or terms for the ascension. So put the word allos paracletos or put the word another comforter. And what you have is the word in Christ. That's what you have. Allos paracletos or another comforter. In the spirit of truth, it will be pronounced as what? In Christ. Because Jesus says, that the allos paracletos will be that in that day you will know that I am in. 
in that day when the spirit of truth has arrived, what you will know by what I am saying now is that I am in. So all Jesus said now will be simply explained in plainness of speech without ambiguity as what? In Christ or Christ in. Teaching good? Am I, am I teaching good? Now also remember so Paul's verbiage is to actually say what Jesus was saying in those clear terms will be this. Listen carefully. If you miss this, you didn't have women in the service. By saying, I go to the Father, by Jesus saying that, it means I will live in you. Just like Lazarus is asleep. Let's go and wake him out. He says, if he sleeps, he does well. Uh, no, he's dead. <laughs> okay? So when he says, I go to the Father, what it means is, I will live in you. By saying, I will give you another comforter, what he is basically saying is, you know, I am in you. Brother Paul just uses the word, in Christ, and they are saying just the same thing. So he's basically saying, that Christ that was seen in the streets of Galilee is dead. The Christ that was seen in the streets of Galilee is dead. He rose from the dead. And his resurrection is proven by his soteria. Remember his territory. His resurrection is proven by his territory. The proof that he has risen, he knows. Remember, remember, he is so tired because of conquest. He is so tired because he has defeated. He has won. And as a sota, after winning his opponent and defeating his opponent, he rises as an emperor. And as an emperor, he must have a territory to claim. So in his resurrection, he claimed his territory. The claim of his territory is called soteria. I'm tying everything now. I hope you're catching. The claim of his territory is called soteria. So his resurrection is proven by his territory. Amongst men. In his kingdom. So Paul is not contradicting Jesus. Paul is explaining Jesus. If eyewitness account was enough, because when Jesus came to the earth, it was God that came to the earth. His character, his teachings are of God. That is, when Jesus spoke, it was God speaking. Jesus is God revealing that it is God talking. God didn't become greater in the resurrection. Watch this. Therefore, Paul's explanation, which is his revelation, is to explain and authenticate everything that Jesus said has happened. Everything that Jesus said has happened or is happening or will happen. And this is the thing that baffles people. The fact that he uses different vocabulary. But he has to because Jesus himself could not communicate beyond how he did. But then comes the spirit of truth. Which is the advancement Peter calls Sophia. According to the insight, the wisdom given to Paul. So Paul simply laid bare the things that Jesus did and said. So do not read the teachings of Jesus like they were not for you. Read them. But read them with the lenses of the spirit of truth. Paul never said, I am writing about Jesus. Rather, he calls his ministry... When it pleased God to reveal his son in me. 
to reveal his son in me. I did not confer with flesh and blood to reveal his son. So he is not trying to guess. If you believe Jesus rose from the dead, if you believe Jesus rose from the dead, then you will see him handle the pen of Paul to write the things that he never said in the way he is saying them now in the letters of Paul. So it's not contradictory, it's advancement. He is putting much more vocabulary, much more verbiage to the things that Jesus said. So you will call Paul's letters Christ letters. That's what they are. Because Jesus gave that role. So as I close, I call Paul's letters the Allos Paracletos. I call Paul's letters the spirit of truth. I call Paul's letters the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Hey. That's why Paul will say, who has known the mind of the Lord that he may explain him. I like the Greek word. It's the word sombabizo. Sombabizo. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may explain him. Then he said, but we have the explanation of Christ. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ means the reasoning of Christ. That is the mind of Christ from the Old Testament, which he also called elsewhere the doctrine of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Where is the mind of Christ? The epistles. Where is the mind of Christ? The spirit of truth. Where is the mind of Christ? Written by brother Paul. Is also the doctrine of Christ. We have. <laughs> we are not going to have. We have the mind of Christ. So when I read Jesus saying something like, Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Blessed are they that mourn. What is Jesus saying? We will explore that tomorrow from the Pauline epistles. Stand on your feet. So we are going to be interfacing between the teachings of Jesus and how Paul interpreted them in the epistles. Are you still here? That's what we're going to be adventuring in. Are you excited tonight? If you're excited, say, I have the mind of Christ. I didn't hear you. Can I hear you like a people that are ready? Can I hear like somebody who knows what you're talking about? Say, I have the mind of Christ. I am in Christ. He is in me. We are in a relationship that can never be separated. I in him, he in me. This is that day. This is that day. Jesus said, in that day, you shall know that I in you. So even when you pray now, where will your prayer be answered? In you. Where is Christ? Who is Christ? Who is Christ? Christ is God. Christ is God. Who is Christ? Where is Christ? Where is God? So when you pray now, from where will it be answered? So instead of waiting to hear something from outside, when you are praying, where should you be listening from? Christ in you, the hope of glory. And one thing is sure, if he's in, in you, it means his answers to the things that you are saying will be rising from inside. So instead of looking around, you should be looking inside. Solution is inside. Direction is inside. Answers are inside. Can you lift your hands and begin to give him praise in this building? Just open your mouth and begin to praise God wherever you're watching, wherever.